As you can see, we, we mounted our transformer to our backing plate away from the system. Um, make sure you secure it to the wall. I wouldn't leave it on the floor. That way if there's a leak, there's not water getting onto it. And don't put it under a, a joint or anything that might drip on it. So just make sure you secure it to the wall before you uh, plug it in. That way there's no opportunity for it to get wet. Okay, once you've plugged your system in, and we can go ahead and open the front cover here. There's a little screw on the side. And I've already loosened this up so it's easy to get with my fingers, but you may have to use a screwdriver to get it open. Sometimes they screw it pretty tight from the factory. But you're going to open this up and slide the door open out of your way here. And you'll have your controller in here. Now you see the controller can hinge off if necessary, but we usually leave it popped in place there. So. What we want to do is we want to check the programming first on this, and it's pretty simple to do. Um, in order to get to the master programming mode on this particular controller, which is called a Fusion or an, an SXT control, you're going to have to change the clock to 12.01 p.m. So to change the clock, we can push and hold either the up or the down arrow until we see the time start to change. You'll actually see a TD show up in the corner here and then a pencil with some dots. Now if you look next to the time, there's a PM there. If you don't see a PM next to the time, then you're on the AM 12 hour cycle. So make sure when you change the time here, you see the PM because we want to be at 12.01 PM. So we're going to push and hold the down arrow because it's at 12.07 PM. And you'll see that TD show up and then the pencil with the dots. We're going to take this down to 12.01 with the little PM symbol there. Now once you have it there, this button all the way to the left is called the extra cycle button and it kind of serves as the enter or the save button. So once you have it at 12.01 p.m., you push that button to save it and it's there now. So now that we're at 12.01 p.m., we can enter the master programming mode. And to do that, we hold the up and the down arrow at the same time for three to five seconds. And you'll see the screen change to DF and then GAL. You can see that there, DFGAL, and then we have the pencil with the dots back again. Now this stands for display format and it's in gallons, so we want to leave that there. So we're going to push this save or enter button again and it's going to take us to the next parameter. Now this parameter is called valve type and we want this set on downflow one backwash. There's some other selections here that you can put that on, but we don't want to change that. We want to leave that on downflow one backwash. The next, and then we're going to hit the save button, go to the next one. The next one is control type. For this particular unit, we want to set it up as a time clock unit because we want this unit to regenerate based off of days between cycles. So we're going to leave that on TC for time clock and save it and go to the next parameter. The next parameter is number of tanks, and that represents the number of tanks below the actual control valve here. Since this is a single tank unit, that's why it says NT and then just one there. So we're going to leave that there and save it. And then this stands for daily override. What this really means is how many days we're going to allow between regenerations. Um, typically I would go no more than three, but to start out I would go at one and see how you do as far as your water usage. If it works out good for you, then you can try to extend it to two, but I would start at one just to be safe in the beginning to make sure that we're getting good quality water. So once you've changed that, then you can push the save button and go to the next parameter. Now this is the regeneration time. They're factory set up to regenerate at 12 a.m. Typically water softeners are going to regenerate somewhere around 2 a.m. This particular unit is going to take somewhere around an hour to regenerate. So you want to make sure it's done well before the softener regenerates. So um, I would say set this for at least an hour and a half before the softener regenerates to make sure that this is completely done if they both happen to regenerate on the same night. So for this particular video, we're just going to leave it on midnight here, but in your case, you may want to change that. Um, if you happen to be working during the night um, or up during the night and you sleep during the day, then you may want it to this, this to generate in the middle of the day. So it really depends on you and your schedule, it depends on what time you'll use in this particular parameter. Now the next parameter is called the backwash parameter. That's when we're backwashing the contaminants we collected out of here. It should be set on 14 minutes, and this is, so we're going to save it and go to the next one. This next one is called brine draw. 
But instead of drawing brine, this particular unit is drawing ambient air to oxidize the contamination. So this particular setting should be set on 40, and it is, so we're going to move next to the next one. Now the next one is considered a rapid rinse. Um, we really don't want to rinse this because we don't want to deplete the air pocket to rinse. So it's set on one minute, which is the lowest setting that we can put in for rapid rinse. So make sure that's on one. Don't set it any higher than one or you could deplete your pocket before you actually get to use it to, to service your home. So once, once that's verified at one, push the save button and go to the next parameter, which is the brine fill. Now the brine fill should be set to off and you can see the word off. Do not set this to anything else other than off. Once you've verified that, you can push the save button again and that takes you back to the time. That basically means that we're programmed and we're ready to do the startup. So at this point what you would do is you would change the time to your actual time of day where you live. Um, we're on the east coast here and I think it's 12.30 a.m. or 12, I'm sorry, 12.30 p.m. not a.m. here. So I'm going to change it to 12.30 by holding the up arrow and I get my TD and my pencil and dots back and I'm going to take this up to 1230 and I'm going to make sure there's a PM next to the zero minute digit and there is so I'm going to hit save. Now this unit's basically programmed and ready to start up so before we pan out I want to show you how we initiate the startup process or a regeneration process. To do that you're going to push and hold this manual regeneration button or this save button. Now let's say for some reason you wanted this to regenerate tonight um, even though it wasn't designed or it wasn't cued to regenerate tonight. You can go up to the unit at any point of the day and push and release this button and it'll make the little faucet blink. And when you see that faucet blink that means this unit's going to regenerate that night at whatever the specific regeneration time that you put in. So um, if you ever want to do that just to initiate a regeneration later after you're asleep you can just push and release. If you ever walk up and just randomly see this blinking that means it's cued to regenerate that night just based off of the other settings that we've inputted. So again push and release to to initiate it later. If you want to cancel it you just push and release again and then that'll go to a solid faucet and then it's not going to regenerate now. So what we want to do is we're going to start up and to start up we want to introduce water into the tank while it's in the backwash position. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a manual regeneration and put it in backwash and then we're going to change cam camera angles here so you can kind of see how we slowly bring water into the system. So to put it in backwash we're going to push and hold this button. And you'll see BW and four dashes and you'll hear the motor start to turn. Now once those four dashes turns into 14 minutes like it did and starts to count down, that's when we're going to introduce wa water to the tank. So we're going to change angles now and show you how we introduce water. Okay, once we've put the unit into backwash, we're going to slowly start to feed water to the system. Um, we wouldn't want to feed the water to the system so fast that we slam the, the inner tube and smash it or anything. So we're just going to slowly open this bypass valve. Now on the bypass valve itself there's a little pointer that'll point to the word bypass or point to the word service. So right now it's on bypass and we're going to slowly open this up. Now you only want to open it up about a quarter turn and slowly let the water in. As this fills the, the tank with water, eventually water will come out and you'll see water go through your drain line here. But you want to go slow enough that you don't get a loud knock in here. If you hear a real loud knocking noise, you're, you're putting water in so fast that the, the air is having trouble to escape. So during this 14 minute period, you're going to slowly move it a little bit more and a little bit more until we have this fully opened in the service position and the tank is full and discharging. Now, we want to do this and make sure that this water runs clear. That's the whole idea. No air coming out and the water running clear. Um, if, it, if it hasn't ran clear, then you may need to go ahead and go through the process again. So um, to, to show you the, the next parameters out here, I want to show you what you would go through to go through the process again. So we're going to change camera angles one more time. But I want you to see 
how slow you should open this and and I mean I've opened it way too fast literally we would probably still be you know just barely open right now because this is a large tank but you can kind of feel the side of the tank too and feel the temperature as it starts to get colder you can kind of tell where the the water level is as it fills but make sure you have this filled up and make sure it's running clear if it's not running clear then we'll run it through a regeneration quickly and back to the backwash cycle to do it again so we're going to show you how to do that real quick from the front here and then I'm going to do some final explanations um, of what you would do to put this system online. But um, once we've introduced water to it and it's fully in and we've, we've programmed it, we're almost done. So we're going to change camera angles one more time and we'll finish up. So now if the backwash cycle is completed, it'll move to the next cycle, which is the brine draw. And you can see that it's counting down from 40 minutes here. Um, if the water's running clear, then you're okay. Just go ahead and let it continue to regenerate. Um, if it is not clear and you need to run a backwash cycle again, you can skip these other steps and get back to the backwash by just pushing and releasing this enter button. And it'll take you to the next parameter that says RR. Now once it starts counting down, you can push the button again and then it'll take it past the brine fill because it's off and take us back to the home screen. Now once in the home screen, you can start the whole process over again by pushing and holding this button and you hold it until you see the BW and the four dashes and then you can continue to rinse the system for another 14 minutes if necessary. Okay, so I'm just going to say that we're done rinsing and everything's back to normal so let me get it back to home screen here. Now once you've rinsed everything, we've programmed everything you're not done yet. You want to go ahead and set the system into a full regeneration and let it do its full capacity. Don't skip any steps because now that we put it online we want to go ahead and put an air pocket in the top of this tank so it can actually treat the water. So um, right now it's full of water so it wouldn't be able to treat anything. So once we've done everything and we're installed then we're going to go ahead and push this and hold it again until we see that BW and four dashes. And then once we do that we're just going to walk away from the system and let it re regenerate or backwash. And once it's done, then we're ready to use water and we're in service. Now, going forward, this is going to backwash based on how many days you put in between the actual regeneration process. Um, from there, it should work fine. Now, if you see that you know you're you're doing fine after a day and you want to extend to two days, you can do that. But if you start to see any kind of trace of iron start to show through, then go back to one day because you don't want to load this thing up with iron because if you do, it's really difficult to get it cleaned out. So it's important that we regenerate often enough that we never deplete this, this air pocket. So that's going to be something that you're going to have to kind of see how you trend at your home depending on your water usage. So this has been the infusion sulfur and iron eradication system. My name's Charlie. This is U.S. Water Systems. If you have any other questions, give us a call at 1-800-608-8792. Thanks.